Let's talk about measuring volume of regular and irregular objects. Um, the difference between regular and irregular objects is that regular objects, if I have a regular object, that means I can actually use a mathematical formula to calculate the volume. And I have a couple of examples that are written here in this diagram here, but uh, one that's left off that's a pretty um, pretty easy, obvious one would be like a uh, would be like a cube, and I'd have, or this could be a rectangular prism. It could go, it could go like a little deeper, I guess, something like this. And the volume for these um, are pretty easy. It's length times width times height, and it doesn't really matter which side you're going to designate as the L, the W, or the H. Um, you just multiply all three sides together, and you'll get a volume. Some of these other ones are a little uh, trickier um, for like a cone, or uh, we have a, a, a cylinder here. But you'll notice that in all of these, or here's a sphere, in all of these, you're taking three dimensions that you're multiplying together. So in this cone, you have r squared. That's two dimensions multiplied together. But then you're going to multiply it by a height. So that's still three dimensions. Same with a cylinder, r squared times a height. And then with the sphere, you actually have r cubed. So in all of these, you're going to have three dimensions. Volumes are, th are 3D. They're three-dimensional. And so when you um, measure the sides in a certain unit, um, and most of the time what we'd like to do is measure these sides we're going to measure them all in the same units, obviously, but a lot of times we like to use centimeters. So if I multiply a length in centimeters times a width in centimeters times a height in centimeters, then you're going to get centimeters times centimeter times centimeter, which, of course, is going to be a unit called centimeters cubed. Centimeters cubed, sometimes that's called a cc. So if you ever hear cc's or centimeters cubed, they're actually um, the same thing. So if we're going to uh, measure regular objects, we're going to use some mathematical formula uh, for a different for a shape and uh, multiply the dimensions together, and uh, you'll get a unit for regular volumes of uh, a cubic centimeters, centimeters cubed. Okay, so some uh, shapes. Uh, like this one here, um, are oddly shaped, and there are no formulas. So we have to use another method for finding uh, the volume of those. And what we're going to use for those is we're going to use um, what we call a graduated cylinder. So I have a cylinder, and it's graduated, which means it has markings on here. And these markings um, are uh, a measurement of what we call a milliliter. You'll see on here it's a M, capital L, but either way, a milliliter. Now, uh, the significance is that a milliliter is actually the same thing as one um, cc, or one cubic centimeter. A cubic centimeter and a milliliter are the same thing. So this is very important here to recognize this and keep this in, keep this in mind. If you're in milliliters, it's pretty easy to convert to cubic centimeters because it's the exact same thing. Every once in a while I see some very strange things like students writing something down like milliliters cubed. I have no idea what that is. That's just a person that has really confused the differences between these. A milliliter and a cubic centimeter are the same, same unit. So keep that in mind there. Okay, so if we want to find the uh, volume of maybe even just a liquid, we would pour liquid into a graduated cylinder, such as the one here on the left. And then we would um, place the cylinder, very important, place the cylinder on a flat surface. And we're going to get down here and uh, look at this cylinder um, at eye level. Very important to get eye level on here to look at this curved part here on the top of the uh, liquid. This curved part up here is called a meniscus. The meniscus. And it's curved because of surface tension, but uh, the way we measure is we we draw a line here at the bottom 
at the bottom of the meniscus, a straight line at the bottom of the meniscus. And we try to measure where, where this is right there. I guess I should have drawn that a little bit, a little bit lower if I can. It's kind of sensitive right there. Okay, that's where we're measuring uh, to. So you'll notice on this particular thing, the volume of this liquid, this is 40 milliliters and this is 50 milliliters. And so each one of these things is, are there's 10 units in here. So each one of these lines would be a would be a mill a milliliter, and um, we can always estimate uh, to the tenths place uh, between the actual markings. So you'll see each marking here is actually one milliliter. So we could actually then estimate between those lines. Now people don't like to do that very because it is a complete guess really but but you have to do that because that's the way the graduate cylinder was marked. So if you look on this one it kinda looks like the blue line is like was that's 40 uh, 1 2 3 it looks like that blue line is right on the 43 line maybe 1 2 3 the 43 line and if you're going to say it's right on the 43 line, that's okay, but you need to do a tenths place of a milliliter, just like we had to do a tenths place of a millimeter on the on the vernier caliper or a meter stick. You have to go to the tenths place here also. So if I'd say 43.0 uh, milliliters or 43.0 cubic centimeters. I could use either unit there. Now what if I have an irregular object that I want to find the volume of? It's actually pretty easy. You just put in some liquid into your graduate cylinder, like I have right here on the left, and write down your starting water or uh, yeah, water level. We'd probably use water here for our, to measure our volume. Start down at our, our initial water level, and then go ahead and uh, tip the graduate cylinder, slide an object down in here somewhere. So. Um, maybe it's some weird object that we have that we're going to put down in here. And when you put the object down in here, the water level will obviously go up. So maybe the water level goes up to something like this. Okay, This is called water displacement. This is how we can figure out the volume of an irregular object. When we don't have a formula to use it, we're going to fill up a graduate cylinder to a certain level with water. It doesn't really matter what the level is as long as it's going to be able to submerge the entire object. And then we easily put uh, slide the object down in so as not to splash water out. And the water level will go up because of water displacement. We'll measure our new, our new level, which is somewhere in here. And maybe we'll say that's 45, 46, 47, 48. Maybe it's right on the line, so we'd say 48... 0 0.0 milliliters is our final volume. This is our initial volume, and here's our final volume, 48.0 milliliters. And all we do then is subtract, and we subtract them. You get 48.0 minus 43.0, and you get 5.0 milliliters. So we'd say the volume of our object is 5.0 milliliters. And so we can figure out the volume of an irregular object by using a graduated cylinder and what we call um, water displacement. Hopefully that helps you figure out how to find the volumes of irregular and regular objects.